Um, first of all, thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to come here and just to share a little bit of, of my own experience and, and in relation to the, the, uh, the issue that's been discussed, and, and that is about making, uh, creating new futures or making new opportunities or whatever it is, bringing about change for people leaving prison. A few bits of information for us that would be worth, because some people don't know this, lots of people don't know this. We have a tiny prison population, relatively speaking, uh, in comparison to most other countries. We have about 3,800 people, um, roughly on any one day uh, incarcerated in Ireland. About 600 of those would be remanded in custody awaiting trial, um, so they wouldn't have been convicted of anything. So we're, we're really talking about 3,200 roughly people. So it is tiny. You'd have that many in one prison in England. So, and of course, you have about 2 million plus in America. Uh, about 70,000 in England, uh, Scotland and Wales, if you added them in, around 100,000 or something less than 100,000. So when you say, we, so we have, as has been mentioned already, we have a tiny number of people. Uh, so the problem isn't as big as we think it is. The breakdown, just because we have a lot of women here, uh, the breakdown between men and women in the prison population is amazingly in favour of men. We, we dominate by far. Um, <laughs> That's the one thing we're very good at, obviously, us men. Uh, and it's a challenge for ye women to see can ye ever equal it on us. Because uh, there's 97% of us men and uh, only 3% women. So you're, you're a you have a long ways to go. Um, but seriously, that also raises about 150 women maximum at any one time. So it's a tiny number of people. Um, a few characteristics. Um, there are vast, vast, vast percentage of them. 97, roughly, maybe 98% come from the poorest areas. So that has to be taken into consideration straight away. They are not a cross-section of Irish society. So you want to get that into your head straight away. They are not a cross-section. Uh, I could identify most of the areas uh, where the people come from. And they're mainly urban areas, and they're the poorest areas in urban areas. So you, you have to pick in Dublin or Cork or Limerick. Um, one other final observation, and then I'll say a few things, uh, other things. But one other final observation, we, we lack research as well. Um, we have Mickey Mouse research by and large. Some people have done bits of research. But generally speaking, since Dr. Paul O'Mahony did some major pieces of research in Mount Joy in 86 and 96, that's 20 years ago, we really haven't done any real worthwhile uh, research. And if you were to look up tomorrow morning Google and say, look, get the latest research, you'll, you'll find it difficult to get any sort of a sociological or criminological background of people. Dr. Paul O'Mahony did a ma major piece of research in just Mount Joy. We have never done one nationally. So, I mean, that's another issue, and that's something that social innovators would look at, because without information, without the facts, how can you plan? You do need facts. You do need research to know, well, where are the issues? Like recidivism, because it's been mentioned uh, in, in the context of today. Recidivism itself is very complex. It's not as black and white as people think. Recidivism is the, is, the, is the term given to people who, you know, go back to prison more than once. He's a recidivist, or she's a recidivist. But that means nothing, really, because if you happen the connection between the crimes. So you could have a person who went to prison at 16 or into detention at 16. He comes back at 36 for a motoring offence. Uh, he will be a recidivist. But there's no connection in the world between the two crimes. Then if people don't come back, what happens to them? Is it that they're not committing crime, or is it that they're not caught? Because remember that, I always say that, you know, they, people used to be cynically saying to me when I was in Mount Joy, it's a university up for crime. I used to say, well, it's a very poor one. The results are very bad. <laughs> because everyone that's in prison is actually a failed criminal. Honestly, the, the real criminals never get caught. Um, so you wouldn't learn a lot in Mount Joy about crime, only how to get caught. Um, so and, and that's another factor, like, so you have to take that into consideration. And then so, so, so some of the realities of prison then is you have generally a very, very low, low level of education. So in Mount Joy, about 7% stayed at school after 16. So 93% were gone out of school by 16. So, whew, so you start off on that basis. Um, so, so education, the lack of education, and the consequences of that are huge in terms of trying to remo uh, respond then to their needs when they, when they come out of prison. Uh, most of them would have not worked, but 88% didn't work before they went into prison. So the, their job records would be there. And my ma main concern at the moment would be that, that they the areas they come from, which are very predictable, they're often now in the third and fourth generation of that, of, of, of families going in and out of prison and into criminality. And their male 
particularly males, because they're the majority of males, their ma- the male role models that they have are generally into crime, into drugs, into that sort of stuff. So they don't have positive role models. Um, so that's the reality. A prison record is a horrendous obstacle. A uh, criminal record, just that you'll know, because Gary in particular will be talking about people who pri- primarily and generally will have, have, uh, may have criminal convictions or about to get criminal convictions, but most of them won't have prison con- uh, records as well. So there's a d- difference. You can have a criminal uh, conviction, but it's not as inhibiting as a, pr- a criminal conviction along with a prison record, because now you really have a problem. Uh, a dilemma for people coming out of prison is, do I tell people? that I was in prison. So you go in for a job and you say, where were you for the last two years, Mount John? <laughs> so you haven't a hope of getting the job. 99% of people won't give you the job. So then you say, all right, I won't tell them at all. And I'll go in and I'll say, I, I was in England. And, and you get the job. But you give the whole time looking over your shoulder and inevitably someone is going to come in someday and say, listen, I, here's a criminal record. Or the company or the employer will do a, 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 a security check. Um, connection, I just want to make a few little things now. C- connecting with people, that's for me, and I know other speakers will, will, will reaffirm this, that's the biggest challenge, connecting with them, because most of them are disconnected from what we consider mainstream society. They feel they're, they live, I should, I should say as well, our housing policy, our public housing policy is the greatest scourge we have created on ourselves in relation to alienating people. And these people come from those areas, they feel alienated, they are alienated, they're disconnected. And I, what I said the other day is that you have to disconnect connect them from criminality and their lives of criminality and reconnect them to the sort of lives that we would be intend, uh, recommending. Uh, one other point I want to make to you, that just that you'll know this, believe me, because I gave a long time at it, you can't force change. So give it up, don't even try. Because you know, we have these great ideas, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? And, and this prison system is full of that. You know, we decide what you're going to do, but you're, you have no interest in what we decide. And so there's no ownership, and that's a big thing. So you have to, God, God, you can't force change, but you can nurture it. You can, this is what social innovation and all this is about. It's about creating environments, and it's about creating ideas, and then it's about nurturing it, and supporting it, and leading it. But you have to bring the people along with you, and you have to get their consent and agreement. And for me, I have always said, the biggest challenge in prison is to get the consent uh, and agreement of the, of the individual person to do whatever. And you start by listening to them, what they want, to talk to them about it, and to try to reassure them that, that what they're looking for is realistic, and that then you can help them to achieve that. It's a low process. And finally, my final point, I suppose, would be that, for my, my experience, would be that the immediate aftermath, in the immediate aftermath of prison, the first two or three months would be the most crucial. They need an awful lot of hand-holding at that stage to try to help them to readjust if they can or if they want to. Um, but, you know, and I'm afraid in, in many areas that those services are simply not there. They're just not there. So they leave Mount Jai with a black peg and they go out and they go back to where they came from. They immediately re-enter back into the same environment, the same friends, the same culture, the same everything. Uh, And so it is difficult to make that break. It is difficult to stay out of crime. Uh, it is difficult to, to make, and we must offer them alternatives. And that's what tonight is about, and that's what some of the speakers will be talking about. Uh, little small things, but significant things that give them an alternative. I always say that in Mount Joy. If, if once that, when a prisoner is leaving, we, as a society now, not just the old governor of Mount Joy, but the, as a society, we should be saying to people, you have a choice. Do you want to stay in criminality? And if you do, you'll be facing in and out of prison for the rest of your time, which is a horrendous existence and which is a waste of time. Or you have this as an alternative. And if we can't give an alternative, well, then we really don't have a lot of credibility. So it's, and that's why these little ideas and these days of reflecting on it are useful, because it, it brings people and almost forces people to think anew, to think fresh, to come up with new ideas. Uh, is it unsurmountable? It's not. Uh, but it is difficult. It won't happen overnight. Changing people is a very slow process. I learned that in Mount Joy. Great ideas, great buildings, great facilities are great, but they don't necessarily help people to change. So the changing of people is a different process. It takes time. It takes great patience and a great belief, a belief that within every single person is the ability and the capacity to change. So it's a tougher one. But you know, there's, there's, it's exciting as well, like all things. It's exciting as well because if you say, uh, my final point is that if you or anyone associated with you helped one prisoner to change his or her life, you have made a massive difference. Just one. Because you have changed or helped to change that person's life, but also you're almost inevitably going to change future generations. 
And isn't that a fantastic thing? That I have changed or helped to change one person, but now I've also, in, 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 as a consequences, changed future generations. Thanks. <laughs>